So last time we left off by adding a color select for our player. Now what I'm going to be showing you this time is how to add a simple chat system for our game. With that said, let's jump right in. So the first thing we want to go ahead and do is we want to set up a new scene. In this case, it's going to be a user interface scene, and I'm going to go ahead and rename it to chat. Then with the chat selected, I'm going to go ahead and add a hbox container as a child of it. And then I'm going to go ahead and rename that hbox container to message. With the message now selected, I want to go over to the inspector, and then I want to open up the rect drop down, and then I want to specify a min size for it. In this case, it's going to have a min size of 570 on the X and 36 on the Y. Then with that done, I want to click on layout, and then I want to click center to anchor it to the center. Then with the message still selected, I want to go ahead and add a label as a child of it, and I'm going to go ahead and rename it to info. Then over in the inspector, in the text field, I'm going to type in message, then I want to go ahead and add another child to the message. In this case, it's going to be a line edit node. Then I want to have that line edit node selected. I want to go over to the inspector and then I want to open up the rect drop down once more. And I want to also specify a min size for this as well. In this case, it's going to have a min size of 500 on the X and we don't have to worry about the Y. With that done, we only have one more thing to do, and actually before I do that, let's actually remember to rename our line edit to something else. In this case, I'm naming it to type message. Now, I want to go ahead and actually select the chat, and I want to go ahead and add a new child to it. In this case, it's going to be a VVX container node. Then I'm going to rename this VBox container node to chatbox. And essentially what this node is going to be doing is it's going to be serving as the container where our messages are going to appear in. So I want to go to layout and then do bottom wide. And then I want to simply go ahead and resize it to better fit the, uh, the area that's going to encompass the messages. And that pretty much does it for the actual scene. So I can actually go ahead and save it now. So I'm going to go and save it in the GUI folder. And I'm going to create a new folder called chat. And then I'm going to save it in there. And I'm going to make sure that both the folder and file name are lowercase. Now with that done, I can actually start coding. So go over into your script. And now before we continue, we are just about to hit 300 subscribers on the channel. So make sure you hit that subscribe button as it definitely helps the channel out. Anyway, with that shameless self plugin done, let's actually continue and go over into your server.gd file. Then I want to go ahead and add a couple new a couple new functions to this. In this case, actually, before I do that, I want to go into the sync function start game, and then I want to do var chat menu is equal to preload, and then the uh, scene we just created, so the chat scene that we created dot instance. And basically what we're doing here is we are going to go ahead and add the chat once the game starts. So I can actually go ahead and duplicate the line where we're adding the world to our game. And then instead of adding the world, we're going to add the chat menu. Now I can actually go ahead and start writing some of the functions that we need. So I'm going to start off by doing function or funk, and then we're going to call it add to chat. And then I'm going to specify a parameter. And in this case, it's going to be message. And then inside the actual function, all I want to do is an RPC ID call to the server. So we're specifying the server with one, and then we're going to call the message send function on the server that we're going to have to make. And then I'm going to pass a couple uh, values to it. In this case, it's going to be players, square brackets, local player ID, and then another pair of square brackets, and then the player underscore name. And then I also want to specify or pass the uh, message content. And that pretty much does it for that. Now over on the server, what I want to go ahead and do is I want to actually write that function that we're calling on the clients. So I'm going to simply do a remote function in this case. So we want to go ahead and do remote func and then message underscore send is what we called it. And then we want to pass in the parameters that we specified. So in this case, the player name and the message. Then inside this function, all we want to do is an RPC call back to our clients, calling the message received 
uh, function that we're going to write on the clients and then we're just going to go ahead and pass the player name once more and the message content back to the clients and i can just go ahead and copy this and then back on the client i can go ahead and actually write that function now so we in this case it should actually be a sync function i believe so we're going to do sync func and then message underscore received and then the parameters that we're passing in so the player name and in this case i'm going to actually rename it to data you can call it message if you want still but i'm just going to call it data in this case now inside the actual function what i want to go ahead and do is i want to do git tree dot git root and then git an underscore node and then i want to get the chat and then i'm going to do dot message and yeah we're, we're just going to call it message and this is basically going to be a function that we haven't actually written yet for our chat and then we're going to uh, pass the player name and the data to it that we're receiving from the server so now with the chat scene open, we want to go ahead and add a new script to the chat. And in this case, we're going to start by doing var max underscore messages is equal to, in this case, I'm going to set it equal to six. You can have it be something larger if you want. And then I want to do func underscore input. And then I want to do if event is action pressed. In this case, I'm going to do UI underscore accept. If this is the case, then what I want to go ahead and do is another if statement. So uh, actually, before I do that, I want to set up a couple of unready variables. So the first one is going to be unready var message is equal to dollar sign message, then unready var. And this one is going to be typed message is equal to the dollar sign message slash type message. And then one more unready var, and it's going to be uh, this time chat underscore box is equal to the chat box. Now I can actually go back into my if statement that I was doing earlier and I can do if typed underscore message dot text is not equal to an empty string. If this is the case, then I want to do server dot add and I think we called it add to chat. Let me just make sure. And yes, it is called add to chat. So we're calling the add to chat function on the server script here. And we're passing the type message dot text to it. Now with that done, I want to do outside of that if statement, I want to do message dot visible is equal to false. And then then we want to go ahead and do typed underscore message dot clear and what dot clear does is essentially it just erases the edit line text then i want to do typed underscore message and then it's going to be dot release focus and what release focus does if you control click on it it gives up the focus no other node will be able to receive keyboard input essentially it just like it says releases the focus of the input and then we want to write an else statement so in this else it's going to be message dot visible is equal to true and then we want to do message and actually it should be typed message i believe so yeah uh, typed underscore message dot and then grab focus so in this case we want to grab the focus instead of release the focus and pretty much what we did there is basically we made it so that uh, when we type a message, it automatically focuses on the input. And then uh, anyway, aside from that, what we want to do is we want to set up a func uh, process delta. And inside that process function, we are going to do an if statement. So if chatbox.get child is less than max messages, we want to do chat underscore box dot get child of, at the zero index. And then we want to queue free. So we're deleting the uh, the message if there's more than uh, six messages. Essentially, that's what that does. And we're going to actually write the message function that we're calling on the server this time. So func message and then player name and data and as parameters for it 
and inside the actual function i want to do var display underscore message is equal to label dot new and then chat underscore box dot add child display message and basically what we're doing here is we're actually adding the message to our chat box so that it actually displays for the player so then we want to do display underscore message dot text is equal to player underscore name plus and then colon plus data and you can actually write it this way as well if you want so instead of doing it the earlier way you can actually do uh, mod s colon mod s instead of the dollar signs i made a mistake there but make sure it's mod and then after that we want to do mod and then square brackets player name and then comma data this is just another way you can write the same thing that we had before now with that done we want to go over to the server script and we want to go ahead and actually make sure that we remove the chat uh, once uh, the game ends so we're just gonna do this by doing on uh, the function end game we're gonna do git tree dot git root dot git underscore node and we're getting the chat node in this case and we're just gonna simply do dot q3 to remove it once the game is over and now we can actually pretty much go about testing this so that's what we're gonna go ahead and do here and actually before I actually do that I want to go over to my world and I want to actually set up a uh, bigger wait time for the enemy spawning so that we can actually test this chat room uh, without worrying about getting killed from, by the enemies. So let's just set the wait time for the enemy spawning to a way bigger number. In this case, I'm just going to set it to 1000. And now with that, I can actually go ahead and test the game out. So if I go ahead and run all my game instances and I join the game and click ready, as you will see, the text field is actually, you can actually see it and you can actually start typing as you see here. And if we actually press enter to input the message, as you see, it does actually show it, but there's a slight issue. It seems that each time we uh, press space is actually entering the message, which is something we don't actually want. So let's actually go ahead and try and fix this issue here. So let me just keep on checking if that's the only issue. And it, it is actually working for the other players as well. So there's just that one issue here. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I wanna go over to my chat scene. And first off, I'm gonna actually go ahead and hide the message node because we're actually hiding it and showing it in the code. And then what I wanna do then is go to project, project settings, input map, and then let's see, UI accept. And as you see here, space is actually set as a key for the UI accept. So that's why the message is actually getting in entered. So just go ahead and remove that uh, key from the UI accept and it should actually work this time. So if I run everything once more to test everything out, you will see that if we press enter the chat actually appears but uh, now we're having another slight issue where we can't actually uh, once the, the chat shows up we can't actually remove it from our screen so let me check my code once more here and it does look like it's fine and actually i think i noticed the issue we actually forgot to add a this statement so let's actually write that if statement we forgot so in this case it's going to be if message dot visible if that's the case then i want to go ahead and do the if type message dot text it's not equal to an empty string then i want to make sure that the else is aligned with the if message dot visible and that the visible or the message dot visible is equal to false the type message dot clear and so forth is aligned with the if type message dot text it's not equal to the empty string if statement and now if we go ahead and actually test our game out and we run everything you will see that if we type a message it will actually be properly hide the input field and then when we want to type a new message we can just click on the enter key it shows back up and we can start typing automatically so that is working but there's still the issue that the uh, chat isn't actually properly being centered so in order to do that we're just simply going to change the chat type to a canvas layer instead 
and that should actually fix it. So if I run the game and we got an error and that's because I'm in the script it actually is extending control instead of what we changed it to. So it should be a canvas layer now since we did change the type of the node to a canvas layer. Now, if we actually run everything and we try and type and we press enter, as you see, it automatically grabs the focus so we can just start typing right away and we can press enter to input the message and it does seem to be working properly. So with that, you're actually done. And as you see here, it is working for all the players. So as you see, Ray said hello, Wolf said hi. And <laughs> I, apparently I can't spell all that <laughs> as I just pointed out in my chat system, but it is all working. So with that, you have a chat system that is working. Now, as you notice, the players do still move if you use the WASD keys. Now, you can go ahead and disable that if you want. I'm not going to be worrying about it in this case for this tutorial. And as you see, if you have more than six messages, the newest or the oldest message does get deleted anyway. With that done, that's it, guys. So I will leave a link to the GitHub project in the description. And as always, if you like the video, make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next one.